Hello everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today's video is all about the Staccato XC, which of course stands for the Staccato Xylophone Criteria. Now, I've had this gun for about a year and a half, if not a little longer, and it's been my everyday carry gun for a year now. The entire year of 2022, I have carried this gun nearly every single day. So this is not your run-of-the-mill review where I took this gun out and put like a thousand rounds through it really quick in a couple of range days. Uh, this is a closer and more intimate review of how this gun actually performs with daily use. In this video, I'm going to give you my honest opinions of what I love about this gun, maybe some things that aren't so great, and whether or not this thing is worth its extremely heavy price tag. And if you're interested in story time, I will talk about how this gun became my everyday carry. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to check the links in the description below. There's a Patreon page where you can show some direct support to the channel. And I'm a published author who wrote two epic action-packed gun short novels. So check them out on Amazon and leave reviews for them when you're done reading. Now let's hop into the review of my everyday carry gun for 2022 and beyond, the Staccato XC. So first of all, since this always comes up whenever I post anything about the Staccato XC and it being my everyday carry gun, um, I have my bingo card ready. If you're someone who really cares what other people do with their freedom, be sure to let me know in the comments down below why this is a terrible option for a carry gun. Um, on my bingo card, I've got it's too heavy, it's too big, it's too expensive, it's too unreliable, the trigger's too light, but I assure you that whatever you say, it won't change my mind. Because as far as the positives go on the Staccato XC, this is the single best production handgun ever made. And I would even argue that the Staccato XC being a production gun beats out the vast majority of custom guns. So now let's talk about why. First of all, this gun has an island comp, which means that the compensator is actually integral to the barrel and kind of sits on an island out here along with the front sight. So if you don't want to run an optic and you're just running the front sight, the front sight is on that island, which makes it very easy to track. This is also an incredible design for a compensator. This whole system that they have set up here for recoil negation is an industry best. So as you can see, it just has one giant chunk port in that island comp that really vents out the gases and keeps this gun shooting flat. And when I say flat, I mean, this is the flattest shooting gun on the planet that will cycle any ammo. So speaking of that, this gun has cycled every ammunition that I have put through it, from full metal jacket to hollow points, 115 grain, 124 grain, 147 grain, plus P variants of all of them, even the lighter 90 grain and 90 grain plus P stuff. This gun cycles absolutely everything. Since purchasing this firearm, I have put 2,500 rounds through this gun with only a single malfunction. And stick around because once we get to negatives, I'm going to mention that malfunction and what exactly caused it. But since we're currently discussing positives, just know that that was not gun related, it was accessory related, and this thing has been 100% reliable as far as the actual firearm goes. Hey everyone, this is your opportunity to truly help this channel out by liking this video, most importantly, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below. For today's comment, let me know, if you were getting a 2011, would you opt for the Staccato XC for 4,300 bucks? Or do you think you'd go with a Staccato P or a C2 instead, maybe the new CS? Let me know. Now back to the video. So anyone who's handled a Staccato XC knows how incredibly smooth and light the slide is when racking it. And that's because this thing runs from the factory with a seven pound recoil spring, which sounds absolutely crazy that you would run that light of a spring in a gun like this. This system that they've developed at Staccato with the island comp, the lightning cuts, and the seven pound recoil spring makes this the softest and flattest shooting gun on the planet that isn't custom and custom tuned to a specific ammunition. And when you pair that with the 1911 or 2011 style trigger, that's only two and a half pounds, you can run this gun incredibly fast. And not only are you running it fast, you are running it precisely and accurately because your sights or your dot don't move. So I almost didn't even show you guys the trigger pull on this gun because I think it can just be assumed that it's incredible, but I might as well show you while we're here. So here's the take up and the press, two and a half pounds, very little travel, about as little over travel as you can get. And then the reset is just hilariously short. This is one of the reasons that everybody loves 1911s and 2011s because just the design of the trigger pulling straight to the rear is very crisp. The break on this is like glass. This gun can be run really fast 
and it's easy to shoot it accurately. A lot of people call this gun a cheat code or cheating, and they're pretty much right. This thing cancels out recoil, it cancels out muzzle rise. That's one of the reasons that this gun carries an incredibly hefty price tag of like 4,300 bucks. So you are essentially paying for the negation of muzzle rise and recoil along with the custom tuned two and a half pound trigger. Other features on this gun that help negate recoil are a steel frame and the typical staccato 2011 polymer grip frame that actually flexes and helps absorb recoil. And of course the Dawson Precision Magwell that also adds more weight to the bottom of the gun. So this gun is heavy and it has an entire recoil system built in to keep it shooting flat. Staccato claims on their website that this cuts recoil down by 30%. And I disagree, I think it cuts down recoil and muzzle rise by like 50%. So just to give you an idea of how flat this gun shoots, here's some behind the scenes footage that was taken that really showcases how flat this gun shoots. It's absolutely insane. So I think you guys get the idea. This is the future of handguns. This is what the evolution of handguns has led to. This is the gun that we've been seeing in video games for years and all these sci-fi games like Titanfall and Cyberpunk. This is the gun. We made it there. This is the one. Now getting into some of the other great features of this gun, it also features the Dawson Precision optic mounting system. And uh, as you can see, I have the Acro P2 on there. So for those of you wondering if this gun will cycle with the Acro P2 on there, because it's adding a lot of weight to this lightweight system, yeah, it runs. I know some people have expressed doubt, it cycles. While this optic mounting system doesn't sit super low, it definitely sits at an appropriate height. It's low enough and it offers a backup iron sight system that works extremely well. This is a very reliable and durable optic mounting system. For iron sight enjoyers, this comes with a blacked out rear and a fiber optic front sight from Dawson Precision, which are my favorite fiber optic sights. So you're getting an excellent sight setup if you don't want a red dot. Of course, the gun also features an ambidextrous safety, which is pretty much a requirement for any kind of firearm in a defensive role. The way that the slide stop is designed to be used as a slide release makes it very easy to use but there's gonna be more on that in the negative, so stay tuned. The magazine release is not oversized, but the way it's designed is it's very intuitive while remaining low profile. You'll see a lot of people replacing the triggers in this because this trigger is actually a nylon trigger with a titanium trigger bar. And a lot of people see the nylon trigger and they're like, ah, I don't want a plastic trigger in my $4,300 gun or you know, my Staccato P or Staccato C2. But this nylon trigger with titanium trigger bar actually works perfectly fine. I have not replaced the trigger or seen any need to. And you know, Staccato talks about how the weight of the trigger, the nylon trigger and that titanium trigger bar, it has to do with harmonics and that kind of stuff in order to not have hammer follow or something like that. But I've seen a lot of people replace their triggers with steel or aluminum triggers and it hasn't caused any problems like that. So I'm not going to knock this thing for not having a flat trigger or not having a steel or aluminum trigger because there was purpose behind its design and this thing has run perfectly with it. I genuinely don't think that replacing a trigger would in any way increase my performance with this gun. I think it's just something fun to do for people who like to add stuff to their guns. Something that I feel like not a lot of people mention about staccatos in general is this beaver tail. Now I know all the hotness with 1911s for a while there was to have this huge extended beaver tail but they've actually chopped this beaver tail off and that rocks for two reasons. Number one, when you were drawing this thing, um, you're not going to get caught up on the beaver tail. Since it's chopped, your hand kind of naturally goes into the grip. So when you're gripping the gun quickly from the holster, it's no longer getting caught up on the beaver tail. If you go a little too high, your hand kind of naturally shoots down onto the beaver tail since it is chopped. The second reason I love this chopped beaver tail design is because I carry this gun in appendix and it gives me a lot of leeway for bending over. A long swooping beaver tail could stab me in the gut when bending over, but this offers me enough leeway that when I bend over, my rib cage just goes right over the top of this like a hinge. So it does not offer discomfort and it doesn't hinder my motion at all. So I love this chopped beaver tail, even though some people might look at it and be like, oh, well, high quality 1911s have that big swooping extended beaver tail, so this one should have it too. I actually prefer this chopped beaver tail. I think a lot of thought went into this as far as actual practical use. I know some people watching this will be looking at the grip and be like, oh man, you don't have the new tactical grip or whatever it's called that's more of that stippled feel. Um, yeah, I have the laser stippled model. I've held both. Um, yeah, the tack model is probably a little stickier, but this one's also plenty sticky. Um, I have no trouble shooting this and locking into it. 
Uh, this laser actually has like little lightning bolts in there and I can just dig my hand right into there. For laser stippling, this is probably the best one that I've felt. And since I carry this thing up against my skin every day, I actually like this smoother texture that I can lock into when I need to. If I were making a recommendation though, I'd probably recommend the new tack grip just because it is a little tackier. But just know if you can only find one with the laser stipple, it's pretty much just as good. So when you purchase the Staccato XC, you of course get the cool Staccato 2011 bag, along with two 17 round magazines and a 20 round magazine. And of course you can opt for and buy the Stendo Stick Mag 26 rounder, which makes the concealed draw a little slower, but in your defensive drive-by shooting, you can just really keep this thing going since it's so flat shooting. So I think the last huge positive that I haven't mentioned yet is its DLC finish, which is a diamond-like carbon finish. This finish is incredibly corrosion resistant and incredibly resistant to wear. I have thousands of reps of this thing going in and out of the holster, and this thing looks brand new still. If you are someone who is picky about the appearance of their gun, I mean, I was prepared to get a lot of wear on this thing when I decided to start carrying it every day, but this thing looks brand new. The finish is second to none. Oh, and as far as takedown goes, it also comes with a toolless guide rod that is pretty cool. It makes takedown, if you understand how to take down a 1911 or a 2011, uh, very easy because you can just pop up a little lever and it captures the recoil spring to make it a lot easier to take out. So now that we've discussed all of the positives and what makes this gun the greatest handgun of all time, um, let's get into some negatives, uh, which honestly has to get really nitpicky. So first of all, let's talk about the thing that some of you may have been waiting for, which is the single malfunction that I had with this gun. I mentioned it wasn't gun related and that's true. It was actually caused by a generation two magazine that just wasn't quite up to snuff. It was the only magazine that had an issue, and honestly, it only malfunctioned a single time. But when I sent it back to Staccato, they confirmed that, yeah, the um, Gen 2 magazine wasn't up to snuff, so they just swapped it out and sent me a Gen 3 magazine. And that kind of segues into another potential negative just with the Staccato XC or Staccatos or 2011s in general, and that is the magazines are kind of sensitive. So you wanna make sure that you are protecting the feed lips and you wanna make sure that you're replacing the springs at decent intervals. I'm not saying the springs need to be changed often, but if you're ripping thousands of rounds through this gun, um, this isn't like a Glock magazine. You have to service it and make sure it's taken care of. The whole system is just a little more sensitive. But if you wanna use this gun for any kind of serious use, that's why for any gun, I recommend having your carry mags or defensive mags and then your training mags. That way you have brand new in-spec strong spring protected feed lip magazines at all times for serious use. Now I know the other huge negative that I'm assuming everyone is expecting is the price. Uh, this gun is incredibly expensive. It's $4,300 and then you have to, you know, think about optic plates and optics and weapon lights and then magazines that are like 70, 80, 100 bucks, depending on what you get. Like the Stendos are really expensive. That's just kind of the game that you play when you start getting into expensive guns is you get what you pay for. Nice things cost money. With expensive, well-designed and tuned guns like this, you are getting what you pay for. Is it worth the money? Yeah, absolutely. Does that mean that you should go out and take out a loan in order to get this gun because it's the best thing ever? No, you can shoot good enough with a Glock. Something like this is for people who just want to squeeze a little bit more performance out of there. It's like tuning your car. You're gaining 1% by adding this, 1% by adding this. The R&D that went into this gun just added up that 1% to the point where they bust through the ceiling of diminishing returns and actually got another significant return. Now my personal biggest negative on the Staccato XC, and it is a negative on 1911s and 2011s for me, it's one of those things that is just almost a deal breaker and that is the slide stop. Using this thing as a slide release. Snake. Ekins. Ekins. Coffee. Now, probably the biggest negative for me on the Staccato XC, and this goes for all 1911s and 2011s as well, and that is using the slide stop as a slide release. When reloading quickly, you have to use your support hand unless you have unnaturally large thumbs because when you're shooting a 1911 or 2011, your thumb is resting on the safety. So you need to be able to reach over the safety and see, it's, I'm already coming off the safety there. You need to reach over the safety to get to the slide stop. And for the vast majority of people, that's just not gonna happen. Again, unless you have a thumb that is like 
one and a half times the length of your average human thumb. So what that means, if you wanna use a slide stop as a slide release, is you have to use your support hand, which is going to slow down your reload to get your next shot on target. That's why a lot of the higher end magazines that are used typically for competitive shooting with 2011s don't even have a slide catch function on them because you need to reload before slide lock because because hitting the slide stop just kind of slow using your support hand because you have to hit it and then get your grip back on the gun versus your grip is on the gun while you're closing the slide. When tenths of a second count, that's where this slide stop can get you into a little bit of trouble when reloading from slide lock. And this is especially difficult if your muscle memory is hitting the slide stop with your strong hand. You have to totally change your thought process and muscle memory. You have to create new habits for it. But that's just kind of the nature of the design of the 1911 or 2011. So if you're interested in 2011s in general and you're watching this video, I'm going to be doing another video that is kind of like, you know, if you're coming from a striker fire platform over to a staccato, because that's kind of the popular thing to do now, the differences between the two and what you kind of need to do to prepare, like this thing has a manual safety and a beaver tail that you need to worry about. Those are things that people might put into negatives that are coming from a striker fire platform. But if you're used to something like this, um, if you're used to 1911s or 2011s in general, then those aren't negatives. In fact, they could even be viewed as positives. So I've gotten some feedback recently from subscribers. They haven't been seeing my videos when they've been posting. So be sure to hit the notification bell to keep an eye out for that video and more videos to come. There's so many great things ahead on this channel. I also just want to mention this in the negatives. I know a lot of people say that, you know, if you're going to carry this thing for defense or anything like that, you should toss in a slightly heavier recoil spring, like a nine pounder or a 10 pounder, um, just to make sure that the gun is cycling properly. But for the sake of testing, just to kind of see how the gun performs in its factory configuration, I put every type of ammunition through this gun, every bullet weight, including plus P varieties, and it cycled everything with that seven pound spring. When the gun started to get really, really dirty, it did get a little sluggish moving forward, but it never had a malfunction. So those are kind of my nitpicky negatives on the gun. I give this gun a perfect 10 out of 10. Like if this gun isn't a 10 out of 10, then a 10 out of 10 does not exist. In fact, like I'm tempted to give this thing like an 11 out of 10. It's absolutely insane and it should be for the price. So how did this thing end up being my everyday carry gun? This is absolutely insane. I know a lot of people are like, I would never carry a gun that expensive. If I had to use it defensively, then you know the cops would take it away and then it would be stuck in evidence and beat up and probably stolen. And if it got returned to you, be gone for like six months. Not to mention, I wouldn't want to put a lot of wear on that you know, $5,000 gun, You know, sweat all over it, get it all messed up. Well, when I bought this gun, I did not intend for it to be my everyday carry gun. I had the Staccato C2 at the time, and I was carrying that and I got the Staccato XC to be kind of my fun range gun. Just shoot some of those lax competitions that don't have any rules as far as what gun you use, just recreational shooting. And then I found myself shooting it more often than my C2. And then I noticed that it wasn't malfunctioning even when I was not cleaning it. And then after I switched over to this gun and just blazed this 3.7's drill with it from concealment, I started wondering what would it be like to carry this gun? And at that time my Staccato C2 was really dirty and I needed to clean it. So this was clean. I started carrying it and then I didn't stop carrying it. And then I started running it more often. And next thing you know, it's just my everyday carry gun and I absolutely trust it. So if you're looking at this gun and you're like, dude, there's no way you can seal carry that gun. You can't hide that. I strongly encourage you to take a look at my review of the tier one concealed Axis Elite because in there I show you how I conceal it. This is absolutely my daily driver. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. The link's in the description below because I'll post stuff on my story. I carry this thing every day. Like John Korea of Active Self Protection says, on your day where you're going to be having a defensive gunfight, it's open division. There are no rules as to what you or your attacker can use so cheat in any way that you can. Use the cheatiest cheaty gun that you can find. With how flat this thing shoots, how quickly I can shoot it, the fact that I vetted it for reliability with hollow points and plus P ammunition, this is what I believe to be the cheatiest cheaty gun that I could possibly find. And I absolutely love it. And you know, I had some life events occur around me that kind of just made me realize that when I got this gun to kind of keep as a safe queen and a range toy, that it was just gonna sit there in my safe until I died and then someone else is going to get to use it. So why not enjoy this gun to the absolute fullest? You know, life is short and you get one shot here on earth, you get one body. So just enjoy your nice and expensive things because if you don't, 
the next person after you die will. But at least that is my philosophy. I hope you enjoyed this showcase and review of the Staccato XC. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out. All right, all right, I know I can't make a Staccato XC video without air racking the gun. Yes, it can be air racked. So here we go. And now I can sit at the cool kids table at lunch. <laughs>